This video continues our discussion of oil pressure problems in advanced refrigerations. So we've now discussed the oil pressure safety controls, the oil separation. Let's go ahead and talk about possible problems. So the first thing we need to check always is compressor oil level. Check the compressor sight glass for sufficient oil. The sight glass should be at least one third full for Copeland compressors. Too much oil can cause crankcase turbulence, which can cause low oil pressure. You want to remove the excess oil and suffice it to say this should be checked with the system off. On startup, low oil pressure can occur in large systems with long piping runs or, or in an evaporator with a lot of tubing. If this is the case, wait for system to settle down and the oil level should recover. If the system is new, you must wait 24 hours after startup to add any oil. This is because oil does migrate through a refrigeration system in transit. So we then we need to take a look at refrigerant piping. Is there a suction riser? Does it have a trap in the bottom? If not, it should. Tube diameter must be consistent with the length of run and the BTU capacity. The more BTUs, the larger the suction line has to be. If the tube is too large, the refrigerant velocity in the pipes become insufficient to carry the oil with it. And again, this is talking about a system without an oil separator. So if we are circulating the oil, we're sending it out the liquid line with the refrigerant. It's going through the metering device and it's coming through the, it's coming through the evaporator. If that pipe is too large coming out of the evaporator, we're not going to have sufficient velocity or speed of the refrigerant coming back to the compressor to force the oil back to the compressor. Tubing should be sloped one inch per 10 feet of run towards the compressor to aid in oil return, and it should be properly insulated. So the other thing we need to do is check the compressor suction superheat. This is a measurement of how much above its saturated temperature the refrigerant is being heated. A high superheat causes low gas density, which causes the system to run at a low suction pressure. This causes the compressor to pump at an inefficient rate, causing the velocity of the refrigerant gas to drop. Once again, we're talking velocity of the gas coming back to the compressor. If the gas is not dense enough to carry the oil back. So high superheat not only causes a heat issue and a loss of efficiency, it also causes insufficient oil return and will eventually damage a compressor. To correct it, open the expansion valve if available to allow more gas to flow back. In other words, lower your superheat. If your system is undercharged, charge it. To check the suction superheat, adjust to 20 degrees at the compressor. If the charge is low, there's not enough refrigerant to return the oil to the compressor. Determine why the system is low on charge. When refrigerant leaks, oil will also leak, which will reduce the oil level. Remember, one of the premier ways to find leaks in a refrigeration system is to look for the oil. Improperly set fan cycling controls reduces system pressures affecting oil return. Low TXV superheat is another condition that causes oil issues. This condition causes flood back, which washes oil out of a compressor. Oil washout causes bearing seizure, resulting in compressor motor burnout, which is often misdiagnosed as an electrical failure. Indicated by excessive foaming of the oil in the compressor sight glass. If you're looking at a compressor that has a sight glass and you see foaming of oil, like a milky foam almost, you're getting refrig liquid refrigerant back into that compressor. Causes can include improperly set TXV, iced evaporator, restricted airflow, or an evaporator fan motor that is not running. Copeland recommends a superheat of 10 to 12 degrees for high temperature systems, 5 to 8 degrees for medium temp systems, and 2 to 5 for low temp systems. A burned out crankcase heater can also cause oil issues. The crankcase heater 
Burr boils off liquid refrigerant in the crankcase to prevent gathering. Remember, liquid refrigerant will always move to the lowest temperature area. Without it, on startup, the compressor will attempt to pump a liquid which will result in a failure. Large amounts of liquid in the crankcase causes oil to be pumped out and violent oil foaming. This reduces lower crankcase pressure and the liquid is trying to boil off. System defrost is critical for low temperature refrigeration system. Iced evaporators cause very poor oil return. A pump down on the defrost system helps avoid this problem by introducing liquid refrigerant to the warm evaporator after defrost, which increases its volume and helps carry oil back to the compressor. TXV distributors can cause problems as well. The distributor contains a nozzle that is sized for application upon installation. Improper nozzle sizing causes refrigerant velocity loss with, that results in poor oil return. As a result, it's uncommon to have the incorrect nozzle, but it should not be overlooked. Oil pumps can cause issues, of course, as well. A worn pump will cause low oil pressure. The possibility of a warm pump is remote unless it's very old. It's possible that the pump is not getting sufficient oil to a clogged oil pump inlet screen. To correct, remove the screen from the pump, clean, and reinstall. Reverse the compressor rotation to allow oil to flow through the unused clean oil port. Low pressure control. An improperly set low pressure control can cause the oil to trip unnecessarily. If the differential is set too close, the compressor will short cycle, causing the OFC to trip. Check the manufacturer's recommended settings for pre low pressure controls. So there is a service diagnostic chart that's available that walks through all of this. Insufficient oil. Add oil to the sight glass. Suction riser too large. Check line sizing. Okay, loss of oil pressure or nuisance oil pressure control trip outs are a major problem when you're dealing with commercial refrigeration. They need to be corrected and it needs to be corrected properly the first time.